Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, Art Appreciation. Each week we'll be looking at different works of art, and I'm going to tell you some things about those works of art and their artist, maybe some things you didn't know. And we can see how they compare to each other, how some artists do things one way, other artists do things another way. Today, we're going to be looking at four different portrait artists. A portrait is a picture of someone's head, neck, and shoulders. Today, the four artists we're going to be studying are Frida Kahlo. She's a woman artist from Mexico. We're also going to be studying Pablo Picasso. He is a Spanish artist, and he's a Cubist painter. We're going to be looking at the artist Mary Cassatt. She's an American Impressionist. And our last artist we'll be looking at today is name is Fernando Botero. He is from Colombia. So now that we see all of these pictures all together, can you all see how different they are? These are all portraits, but they are very different from one another. They all have different backgrounds of where they were created, who is the artist that made them, what was their story. So every artist approaches the portrait in a very unique and personal way. But let's take a look at some of our paintings up close now. This is Frida Kahlo's painting, Self-Portrait with Monkey, Monkeys. And a couple things I want to point out to you. First of all, Frida had an accident when she was a teenager and had to be in a body cast for a long time. She also had a disease called polio, which made it challenging for her to walk. So she made a lot of self-portraits because she was in bed a lot. Oftentimes on Frida's pictures, you will see the complex leaf patterns in the background. Almost all of Frida's paintings have some sort of leaf or plant going on in the background. This painting is called Self-Portrait with Monkey and Parrot. Look at that complicated grain that's hanging out behind her there. This is typical of Frida's paintings. Now, they look pretty much like we would expect. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out, on Frida's shirt that she's wearing with the monkeys, Frida was raised in a family that had means, but she chose to wear the clothes of the native indigenous people of Mexico. So when she makes a portrait like this, it's making a statement, you know, no, I'm going to wear these clothes, not the fancy ones. So we're going to take a look at another artist. Let's take a look at our Picassos. Now, the, this Picasso is called Girl with a Red Beret. Picasso was a Cubist artist. That meant that he was trying to show more than one side of an object at a time. That's why these paintings have very peculiar faces. Look at the eyes don't match, they're full of color. This other painting is called Weeping Wim Woman. He made a lot of paintings called Weeping Women because he broke a lot of hearts throughout his life and made a lot of women cry. Now, I want you to take a good look at these paintings by Picasso. I want you to see all the pattern that's inside of them, inside the dresses, the pattern on the hair. And doesn't that kind of remind us in some ways of the patterns that Frida used on hers? Only hers was the background. Picasso chose to put his patterns on the inside of the face. So they both are very different, but they are both clearly portraits. Now we're going to go to our next artist. This is Mary Cassatt. She's an American painter, and she's considered an Impressionist painter. Although she's from this country, she spent most of her life in France and studied with some of the Impressionist painters that were painting there. Her main subject matter is moms and kids and everyday things like doing the laundry and making lunch. So that is mostly the types of images that she chooses to make her paintings of. This painting we're looking at now is called Girl Adjusting Her Hair. You can see she's just getting ready for bed maybe. I want you to look at the pattern on the wallpaper. Look how beautiful and loose that's drawn. There's just enough there to show us the pattern but not too much to be distracting. And the blue of our girl's shirt matches the blue on the dresser. That ties our painting together. So the things that are in the front of the painting 
can relate to the things that are at the back of the painting, the foreground and the background. The other painting she did is called Girl with a Green Bonnet. And I love the way she painted the ribbons on this bonnet. A long time ago, they used this fabric called satin a lot when it came to hats. And it's a very shiny fabric. And it's kind of hard to paint, but she, because she was an impressionist and a loose painter, I feel she really communicated that that silk, that that silk, that green ribbon is shiny. So you can see these portraits are, again, very different from the two that we just looked at earlier. Now our last artist for today, his name is called, his name is Fernando Botero. And this man is from Colombia. And he doesn't fit into any particular category, so he invented his own category. It's called Poteroism. All of his people that he paints all look a little big. They all do. And this painting that we're looking at now is called Mona Lisa. He kind of did his own Mona Lisa. Now, we're not sure why he did Mona Lisa to look like this and why he chose Mona Lisa. Maybe he was kind of making fun at how popular that painting was. The other painting we have from Mr. Botero is called Familia Colombiano, means Colombian family. And this is like any portrait you would have done of your family. But you can see his people are distinctly puffy in a way. So anytime you see a work of art that has a puffy person on it, chances are Mr. Botero was the artist for that painting. So you can see, there we have four different artists who all did portraits and how different they all are. And I want you to be inspired by this because a portrait can be any way you paint it. Clearly, it doesn't have to specifically look like you. It's more an impression of you. You're the artist, you make up the rules. And you know, looking at artwork in a book or a copy is one thing, but it cannot compare to looking at an actual artwork in a museum. I hope I've helped you understand a little bit better about portrait art and artist. And remember, you can make your portrait any way you want, with any colors you want. It doesn't have to look any particular way. That's the freedom of being an artist. Well, thank you for joining us today for art appreciation. And next time, we'll have some more art to look at.